Good morning. This is uh, the speciation presentation, and this one should be a little bit quicker than the uh, than the evidence of evolution one. That was a that was a doozy. A lot to talk about. Speciation is the basic idea of, of evolution. It's the main. It's the main. It's the biggie. It's uh, basically descent with modification. Um, here's a small example here of the butterflies. Um, you know, there's two different styles of butterflies, and in and, and it's basically how we get all species on the planet. So. Let's start off with uh, talking about what the heck is a species. So here we have a some sort of a beautiful fish and a dachshund um, that is wanting to eat this fish. And they're obviously not the same species. But um, so what is a species? So let's start off with the definition of the word population. So a population in biology, in ecology, and evolution is all the members of a species living in the same area. So it would be, you know, for instance, um, maybe all the dogs in Rockland maybe all the fish in this lake that were this species of fish, maybe all the turkeys that are running around um, Rockland. Um, they are a, a, a population because they're the same species. So what the heck is a species? So a species is a population whose members can interbreed. Um, obviously the dog and the fish cannot interbreed. Um, they do interbreed. Obviously the dog and the fish do not and they produce fertile um, viable offspring as a result so what the heck are we talking about so um these two dogs um although they look dissimilar um they are the same species caninus familiaris and they can interbreed they do interbreed if you let them and they will produce viable fertile offspring um this is a mule and a mule used to be the greatest example and it still is a good example but a mule is made by crossing a donkey and a horse. A donkey is, is quite small, but it's stubborn and strong. And um, a horse is are actually quite fragile, even though they're big and powerful. So um, people wondered if they cross a donkey and a horse, they would get something good. And they, they did. They get a mule. A mule is strong like a horse, but stubborn um, like a donkey. So it gives it an ability to really um, be a pack animal. And Whereas a horse is not a great pack animal, actually. A horse is not like to carry stuff. Um, besides people, I guess. Uh, so mules are very sturdy, very sure of foot. The problem is that most mules are actually sterile. So they're kind of a dead end, an evolutionary dead end. So um, are they even a species? Well, um, I guess it's a little bit debatable, but the idea is that um, once you get too far apart on the evolutionary branch, like a donkey and a horse are relatively far apart. Um, then you can no longer breed. And if you do breed, you won't produce fertile viable offspring. So anyways, that's one example. Um, uh, this one is a liger. And uh, you know, ligers aren't very common in nature. Uh, I know there are some weird, interesting things like there's a, um, a growler bear or a pizzly, which is a, uh, grizzly bears and polar bears are supposed to be a different species, but sometimes in nature they do interact and have babies so are they really a different species interesting concept ligers all the ones we know of i guess probably are in captivity i don't know if there's ever been one google it maybe there's um I seem to remember maybe i did google it at one point and there probably are maybe there's a liger out there in, in nature as well check it out i don't know you find out okay how do new species form so let's take a look at this so here's the members of a species that are the smiley face uh, species. And the original population all shares alleles. So they're intermixing and all the genes are kind of spread out and you have variation in that mix, but they're all kind of together. So let's say a river forms between the population and it causes what's called isolation, which means one side is isolated from the other. And let's say this river is so big that they cannot get across. They can no longer interbreed, it's not possible. So um, interbreeding is impossible. Over time, there's a mutation of antennas, there's a mutation of a green color, there's a mutation of a purple color, and there's a furry one. And so over time, these mutations will be isolated because the mutations are just genetic mutations. And um, whatever happens on one side of the river might not happen on the other side. So now over time, you've had these new mutations. And let's say the, um, the environment favors the green. The, the color provides camouflage. And the other environment, maybe it's cold and it favors the furry one. So over time, um, these things 
will, um, by the process of natural selection, they'll become more common on the south side of the river and on the north side of the river. And so over time, because of natural selection and the, the fact that the beneficial mutations become more common, then you could have a whole new population and hold on. Um, a whole new population, and this population um, may not be able to uh, breed anymore. So if you, even if you got them together, um, this population, if they met and um, were on the same side, either they couldn't breed or they wouldn't breed. So why the heck wouldn't they breed? Well, that's part of what we're going to talk about, um, which causes this thing called isolation. And so um, let's take a look at the next page. So there are two types of isolation, basically. There's geographic isolation and there's reproductive isolation. And so um, reproductive isolation, I usually say the words um, colors, calls, and seasons. That's a basic general way to say it, colors, calls, and seasons. So we'll talk more about it in the next coming pages, but behavioral is how they behave. Temporal is um, seasons. Um, that one which you can't see is um, mechanical, which means they cannot physically mate. And then gametic, which means their gametes won't mix. Um, those ones are all reproductive isolation. Um, the ones that say geographic isolation, they're allopatric. Allopatric means that um, allopatric means uh, like almost like different fathers. They're from different places. You can see the orange um, flowers on the north side of the mountains, and the south flowers on the south side of the mountains, and they're in different places. Allo meaning different. Um, Sympatric speciation means that you're in the same area. You could be in the same pond, in the same forest. And sim means same. Um, and so basically saying that you, um, you're you um, in the same place, but you still don't mate or can't mate. And so let's talk more about um, what those are on the next pages. So geographic, there's these two squirrels, very famous. Um, you know, when the, when the can Grand Canyon was a Bacano Canyon, um, these two squirrels could interbreed and they, and they would. And so over time, they wouldn't become dissimilar. Because the Grand Canyon is the Grande Canyon, um, the schools can no longer intermix. And so over time, they've um, become far enough apart that um, they're considered by scientists to be um, different species. That's geographic isolation. Geographic isolation could be from a river. It could be from a different continent. It could be from a lake, um, a mountain range, uh, a canyon. So anything... Um, that is putting you into a separate area where you cannot intermix is called geographic isolation. Um, if you live in the mountains of Santa Cruz and you live in the mountains of Tahoe, um, very difficult for a mountain lizard to get from Santa Cruz to Tahoe. Um, the, the dry valley is between. And so that's a form of geographic isolation. That's a pretty easy one. Okay. The next ones are um, colors, colors, and seasons. And it's a form of reproductive isolation. And so this first one is the mating dances, uh, the blue-footed buoy. Um, you got to see this. Click on the link in um, the other presentation. Um, the blue-footed booby, uh, blue-footed booby baby dance. It's hilarious. They um, they do a mating dance. So, anyways, um, and birds of paradise. Um, that's actually a bird. I know it looks like a big black smiley face, but that's actually a bird hiding behind the feathers. It's crazy cool and the birds of paradise are amazing and so they're super specific with with who they mate with um, by these reproductive dances and colors and calls so anyway that's a form of reproductive isolation they could be in the exact same area as another bird that they could mate with but they never will because of the colors calls or seasons um seasons temporal isolation and so these two beautiful skunks uh, i'm sure they don't smell beautiful but they are quite beautiful to look at they live in overlapping regions. They do overlap, but their seasons don't overlap, so they can't interbreed. Even when they, even when they're close to each other, one breeds in the summer, one breeds in the winter, so they stay separate. I don't know if you could tell the difference between the spots and the and the, the striping patterns on the skunks, but I guess apparently they can. And uh, so they are two different, although they live in overlapping regions. You can see in Texas, um, they can overlap, but um, they still won't mate. So that's uh, calls, colors, and seasons. That's a form of reproductive isolation. And sympatric means they're in the same area, but they still don't uh, mate. Mechanical. This one's easy. They have different shapes. The, the shapes and the positions of these damselflies or dragonflies will not allow them to actually procreate together, even though they could. If you could mix the, 
the sperm and the egg together, maybe in a petri dish, you could form a new organism, but their penises will not allow them to, to do it. So they can't. So that's a form of reproductive isolation. Um, and the last one is gametic. And gametic isolation is where um, it's almost like the, the coronavirus. It can't just attack anything. Um, it has to be able to get into the cells. And so um, the entry of the sperm into the egg is um, a process where the egg has to, you know, the sperm has to have kind of like the right key to open the door of the eggs once it gets there. And so um, there are cases where the sperm just can't enter. Just, to, you know, think about a, an ocean where there could be several organisms um, reproducing at the same time frame. Full moon comes out and there's a bunch of organisms. So there would be um, starfish and echinoderm and, and uh, muscle and whatever different types of organisms the sperm would be free floating in the water um it, and that would be just a massive mixture of sperm and eggs uh, mating in e e fertilizing each other and making zygotes of the weirdest type but they don't and um that is gametic isolation where this the sperm literally has to have the right key to open the door to the egg and so even though they're in the same area and the sperm and eggs are there they won't cross fertilize so if they're far enough apart as far as species is concerned so those are the forms of um of of isolation geographic and reproductive okay the last thing is our model our our pqm model and so um uh what we have here um going back to our little guys so phenomenon new species are formed so the question is how the heck do we get new species? Question. That's where we go. How are new species formed? And then the model. Uh, the model says that the members are isolated, uh, which means either geographically or reproductively isolated, separated from one another so they can no longer mate. Um, and then you have the mutations occur differently in the isolated populations. So a entrance of new genes that were never there before and probably won't be ever in the other population. And then natural selection, natural selection has to give advantage to the new mutations. So it has to be an advantage. And over time, a long time, um, this can lead to a formation of a, a new species. And that can no longer breed with the original population. And if you take this far enough um, over time, you would get to the whole idea of the tree of life in evolution. Going back to the idea that we all share common ancestry. And so um, that's the basic idea of speciation in our model. And um, I hope you had a great day and, and learned a lot and I will see you later.